He who has an ear to hear, part four. This is the church, the fourth letter, the church of Thyatira. <clears throat> the church during the apostles' time has passed at the time of this, this letter. So Jesus understands the progression of the churches. This is what he's really telling us in the letters. So the age of Ephesus has passed, the age and sufferings, right? Remember of Smyrna has passed, the period of Pergamos is also gone. Thyatira follows. The church in Thyatira will continue only until the Lord Jesus comes back again. Not only Thyatira, but also Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. They will continue until the Lord Jesus returns. In the first three churches, there was no mention of the Lord's coming again. But in the last four letters, um, the coming back of the Lord Jesus is spoken of in each case. Laodicea, however, does not speak of the Lord's second coming, literally because of something concerning her, which I will explain later. The, late, the latter four churches will continue until Lord Jesus returns. In the Bible, right, the number seven, you guys know, if you watch my videos, how much attention I pay to numbers. You should pay attention to numbers. In the Bible, the number seven signifies complete lit, completeness. Seven is composed of three plus four. Three is the number of God, right? God, he's three in one. God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Four is the number of the creature of God. It is the number of the world, including the four directions, the four winds, the four seasons, and that, that I go on forever with that. I've already done a video on the numbers in the Bible and all of their meanings. All of these contain, um, all of these contain the number four. Seven means the creator plus the creature. So when God is added to man, that is completion. So this complete completeness is of this world. God never puts seven in eternity. The number of cl completeness in eternity is 12. So seven is three plus four. 12 is three times four. Are you, are you, are you catching that? When God and man are put together, that is completeness in this world. When the creator and the creature are joined together, then there is eternal completeness. So the number seven is always three plus four. The seven churches are divided into the first three churches. We already did that. And now we're at the last four churches. Three churches, the first three do not speak of the Lord's coming back, while the other four refer to the Lord's coming again. Thus, three churches belong to one group, while the other four belong to another group. So the church in Thyatira is first among the four churches that will exist, right? That progression, that 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 age, that understanding, the, the, the practices, the teachings, whatever. They all of that is going to exist until the return. So what are we taking note of now? Okay, how desolate the church has become in her outward appearance. First, we saw the behavior of the Nicolaitans. Later, we saw that it developed into a teaching. But what about the church now? The Lord says, but I have something against you that you tolerate the woman Jezebel. She who calls herself a prophetess and teaches and leads my slaves astray to commit fornication and to eat idol sacrifices. That's in verse 20. So who is Jezebel? Jezebel, you guys remember this. And if you don't, man, go read in Kings all about Jezebel, Ahab, and Elijah. And that showdown, oh my goodness, best story in the Bible, if you ask me. Uh, other than, you know, Jesus' time here. So Jezebel was the wife of Ahab, who married her from the land of the Zidonians, the Gentiles. Jezebel seduced the people to worship Baal. Seriously, go, go read 1 Kings starting at 16, 30, and on, on down. 1 Kings 16. Baal was the god of the Gentiles, not the god of the people of Israel. Jezebel told the people to worship the image of Baal. 
the problem was not just idols, but that God of Israel had been replaced. Baal was brought in and worshipped as their own God. In the history of the Jewish nation, uh, Israel, up to 1 Kings 16, no one had ever led the people of Israel to sin in such a way as Ahab. Ahab was the first to lead the people to worship a Gentile God on a large scale. I mean, a really large scale. Not even Jeroboam could match him in the sins he committed. Okay, so Jezebel is a woman, as in the woman in Revelation 17. That is referring to the Roman Catholic Church. In Matthew 13, 33, the woman who took who took the leaven and hid it three measures of meal is also the Roman Catholic Church. Naturally, therefore, the, the woman in Revelation 2.20 also represents the Catholic Church. God never acknowledges the marriage between his people and the Gentiles as proper. God said that that is fornication. So Jezebel was not the queen. The coming together of Ahab and Jezebel was fornication. Fornication is confusion. What God sees is a woman who was confusing the words of God and the people of God. This woman brought in, hold on. This woman brought in the God of the Gentiles. I have already said that the result of fornication is idolatry. The New Testament speaks of the conference at Jerusalem, the result which was to exhort the Gentile brothers to abstain from meat offered to idols and from fornication. Acts 15, 29. Here we see that fornication of Jezebel brought idols into the kingdom of Israel. This is basically what James is telling us in 4, 4. I've mentioned James 4, 4 in all four parts of this series so far. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know that the friendship of the world is war with God. That's war, that war is a word enmity. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. This is Thyatira. James 4.4 4 is, is telling you about the church of Thyatira. All right, that's the Catholic church today. Catholicism takes in Gentile gods, right? <laughs> you, you, you know what idols are, right? Images. So... Catholicism takes in Gentile gods and hangs signs of Christianity upon them. Their biggest idol is Mother Mary. Some think that at least Mary is of Christianity, but the fact is that all, I guess I would say nations, kingdoms, has goddesses. Greece has a goddess. India has a goddess. Egypt has a goddess. At this point, you know, in the day, when the Catholic Church was stopped or started, everybody had a goddess except Christianity. So they thought that they needed a goddess and they brought in Mary. Actually, there is no goddess in Christianity. The origin of the concept of the goddess is in the Gentiles. So this is idolatry on top of fornication. This is Jezebel bringing in the things of the Gentiles to the kingdom of Israel. Whenever the church has authority to preach, that is Jezebel. You, you, just, you need to understand Jezebel. You need to understand the spirit of Jezebel. You got to read, you know, that, that first Kings. Just read that and, and just understand. This Jezebel spirit is our world today. It is nothing but Jezebel. It is woke. It is stupid. I, I'll just stop there. <laughs> it is woke. And it, it, I'll say it like Trump said it. Woke means dumbass. All right, that's the spirit today. About the one of the only times I listened to Trump talk was when he, when he said that in his speech. All right. So the church has nothing to say is what I'm trying to say here. In other words, the, ch the church has not got the word of God in it. It's a bunch of fluff. It's a bunch of stuff that these preachers say that makes you want to keep coming back and idolizing them they're not reading from the book of they're not reading the living word they're just not that most of them aren't even reading king james the son of god is the word 
Therefore, only he has the word. Christ is the head of the church, not the priest, not the pastor, not the clerk. Christ, right? You sit in your living room, read, that, that's your, your body is the temple. Your body is the ecclesia. Your body is the bride. And the only priest that you have here in this fallen world is the Holy Spirit in you reading the living word. Christ is the head of the church. Therefore, only he can speak. Whenever the church speaks, that is the preaching of the woman. All right, that is Jezebel, period. You know it is because they got to start the first hour of the so-called worship service with the loudest music possible. That's fallen angel territory. That's second heaven stuff. Put down those microphones. Get rid of the electric guitars and the drums. What are you doing? They're stirring up the spirit of idol idolatry. That's what they're doing. They're stirring up the spirit of idolatry. They're serving Satan. This is a satanic system that went wrong from the get-go at Ephesus. It just did. And now it's, it's just Jezebel. And Jezebel with all these so-called female pastors out there getting everybody addicted to predictions. Oh yeah, no, they have to, they have to give out 30 minutes of predictions daily. None of them come true. I mean, odds are 10, 20% is going to come through just because they're giving out a hundred a day. Well, you're going to knock, you're going to knock two of them. You're going to get two of them right out of a hundred. Sure. I mean, there's nothing new under the sun, right? And I gave her time that she might repent and she is not willing to repent of her fornication. Revelation 2.21 They are still united with the world and filled with the behavior of the world. Behold, I cast her into bed. Verse 22. Not in a coffin, but into a bed. A coffin means it's finished. A bed means it's not finished. It means that she will not be changed throughout her entire life. The patient cannot be cured, cannot be changed. The patient is Jezebel. That's the word in the church today. It's Jezebel. Continuing in that present condition, she is incurable. The church is incurable. Okay, this isn't my words. Read Revelation 2. It's right there. These are the words of Jesus himself. He's telling you about the church today. He understands the progression. And he's telling you about these last four, should I say stages, maybe? The, the, the last four progressions. And the biggest is Jezebel. Listen, at that Elijah showdown, at that Elijah's fire, there was 850 of her Baal prophets and her Asherah prophets. That's the spirit going on today with these so-called women pastors who need to make 100 predictions a day. All right, so this is the condition of the, the Catholic Church. We read in Revelation 2, 26, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea will continue until the Lord Jesus comes again. The first three all came and went. The last four emerge gradually and continue together until the Lord comes back. Now, I personally want Philadelphia, well, anyone who reads the letters understands Philadelphia, and that's the only way it should be. So, we are going to start part five with the church in Sardis. And all God's people said, amen.